Now, if you thought you'd heard the end of Meghan and Harry, and I hoped I had, uh, then think again. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are working on a bunch of new content for Netflix, according to one of the streaming giant's senior executives. So what can we expect? Host of the To Die For Daily podcast, Kinsey Schofield, joins us from <laughs> Los Angeles. Morning to you, uh, Kinsey. Uh, there's been a lot of talk, hasn't there, about whether this Netflix deal has anything left in it, whether it was going to go the way of, of, of Spotify, but apparently not. There's more to come. That's right. And we learned this in a private meeting that, you know, Netflix was having internally. This is a Netflix executive saying that there are some projects on the horizon, including a film and two unscripted projects. Uh, Meet Me at the Lake is a book by Carly Fortune that we know, according to page six, Netflix actually purchased the rights to for Archwell to produce. It is a story about, uh, it's a romance about a woman in Toronto, Megan filmed Suits in Toronto, reminder. Uh, there is a, a, par a parental death in this book. Um, and I'm assuming there's a lake involved based on the title. <laughs> uh, but, you know, some co sort of morbid coincidence is there that's perfect for marketing for the couple between Toronto and, and the parental um, death. Uh, so Meet Me at the Lake, we believe, is the film that's happening. They describe that as the early stages of development. And then, Sarah, I know forever you've been hearing the rumors about Prince Harry doing a documentary yeah. or a docu-series in Africa. So we're assuming assuming that that's one of the other projects. And I, you know, just going over the last few days after that Mail on Sunday investigation about African parks, I wonder how Harry could even promote a docu-series about Africa mm. with that scandal still up in smoke. So hopefully, you know, there are some changes yeah. made there before that comes out. This is the very serious allegations being made uh, about rangers uh, for African parks uh, accused of uh, raping and torturing uh, people in the Congo uh, Basin. Uh, very serious allegations and questions uh, being asked about Prince Harry's involvement mm. in the charity. Mm. Now, Kinsey, uh, they obviously signed this deal back in 2020. It's a five-year deal. Here we are four years in. That deal was worth, what, 100 million US dollars. Is this a case of them actually having to churn out something? I'm still very struck by Bill Simmons calling them grifters. Um, and uh, also that comment uh, from uh, some months ago saying uh, they have swelled into a sanctimonious bubble. In many ways, I wish they would. Do you think there is real substance here in terms of what they're delivering? Or is this simply because they're coming up against a hard deadline? Well, they are coming up against a hard deadline. And don't forget, it took them two years to actually execute Harry and Meghan, the only commercial success they've had so far out of the three projects that they have created for Netflix and went through multiple production teams. So can they do these next three projects within the next 12 months. I think that there's a big question mark over that. But you're right. I mean, they lost their Spotify deal because they did not produce enough content. Uh, you know, it, they were with Spotify for, for I think, several, maybe two years, and all that they did was Megan's 12 episodes and one Christmas special. So they have produced more for Netflix than they did for Spotify so far. And I do believe that they are just trying to Turn, turn stuff out so that they can continue, so that they can at least fulfill their obligations to Netflix. Something perhaps with a little bit more substance, uh, though, we got this video released uh, yesterday of them talking about online bullying in line with what's been taking place in the US Senate this week, Kinsey. I mean, and just listening to the conversation, the guest you just mm. had on, I mean, it, it's, it's very timely. Uh, you know, and I do think it's hard to criticize Harry and Meghan when they are talking about something that obviously needs to be addressed. Um, this affects you. This affects me. Uh, this affects everybody. When we log on to social media, the, the, the freedom people have to be so hateful to 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 distribute other people's addresses. And, you know, I think it's called doxing. I mean, there is there there needs to be ru new rules and regulations around social media. Harry and Meghan are acknowledging that. And, you know, I I applaud them. But I would also stress that I think some of the biggest bullies online are Harry and Meghan fans. So maybe they need to address their own first. And, and Kinsey, just in terms of the response from the Senate, are the Senate going to sit there and say, oh, look, Harry and Meghan say that we need to take this seriously, therefore we must take this seriously, or will they be ignored? 
Oh, David, this is exactly what I'm saying. Harry and Meghan have nothing to do with this, but they released this video. This was a, uh, this was a shot at an event last year at the, you know, in December, I believe. Uh, this was a video that was shot last year. They in, they they released this video to insert themselves in the conversation, but no, they have nothing to do with this Senate Judiciary Committee meeting. That this is just them inserting themselves in the conversation. It's a great cause, but are these two qualified to, to be having this discussion? Uh, Kinsey, thanks so much uh, for joining us this morning. Uh, great to hear from you. As I have always. to tell you, by the way, I listened to the podcast. Uh, yeah, couldn't last. Couldn't couldn't Who's actually podcast? listen, Harry. Oh no.